Hi Year 11, it's Mrs Fitzgerald. I'm going to talk to you today about My Last Duchess. Um, this was written by Robert Browning, who was born in England but lived in Italy for many years. He became fascinated with Italian Renaissance, um, that's between the 14th and 16th centuries, uh, where art was particularly prominent. Um, My Last Duchess was published in 1842. A little bit about the poem. Uh, it's about a duke who proudly points out the portrait of a duchess, who is his former wife, to a visitor. He was angered by her behaviour while she was alive because she was friendly towards everyone and he became annoyed that she treated him just like anyone else. So he tried to stop the Duchess's flirtatious behaviour but he doesn't exactly say how he did this. There are strong hints, however, that he had her murdered. The Duke and his guest walk away from the painting at the end of the poem and the reader discovers that the Duke's visitor has come to arrange the Duke's next marriage. OK, I'm going to read you the poem now. My Last Duchess. That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder, now, for our Pandolf's hand worked busily a day, and there she stands. Will it please you to sit and look at her, I said, for our Pandolf by design, for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance, the depth and passion of its earnest glance, but to myself they turned, since none puts by the curtain I have drawn for you but I, and seemed as they would ask me if they durst how, much, how such a glance came there, so, not the first you'd turn and ask of us, sir. T'was not her husband's presence only called that spot of joy into the Duchess's cheek. Perhaps, perhaps Frau Pandolf chanced to say, her mantle laps over my lady's wrist too much, or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half-flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough of calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked what air she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. Sir, t'was all one. My favourite her breast, the dropping of the daylight in the west, the bow of cherries some officious fall broke in the orchard for her, the white mule she rolled round with she rolled with round the terrace, all and each would draw from her alike the approving speech, or blush at least. She thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of nine hundred years old name with anybody's gift, who'd stoop to blame this thought of trifling. Even had you skill in speech, which I have not, to make your will quite clear to such as one and say, just this or that in you disgusts me. Here you miss or there exceed the mark, and if she let herself be lessened so, nor painly set her wits to yours, forsooth, and made excuse. Even when would be some stooping, and I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled, no doubt, whene'er I passed her, but who passed without much the same smile? This grew. I gave commands. Then all smiles stopped together. There she stands as if were as if alive. Will it please you rise? We'll meet the company below then. I repeat, the count your master's no munificence is ample warrant that no just pretence of mine for dairy will be disallowed. Though his da fair daughter's self, as I avowed, as stating is my object. Nay, we'll go together down, sir. Notice Neptune now, taming a seahorse, though thought a rarity which close of Inbrook cast in bronze for me. I'm just going to pick out three key quotes and tell you a little bit about what I think of them. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is, Since none puts by the curtain, I have drawn for you but I. This shows the Duke's control. Now that uh, the Duchess is dead, he can control who looks at the painting, unlike obviously when she was alive and he couldn't control who looked at her then. Um, the next one is uh, called that spot of joy into the Duchess's cheek. So here, uh, repetition is used to show that his wife's blushes bother him. Um, it's clearly something that he found annoying. And my final quote that I'm going to talk to you about is, I gave commands, then all smiles stopped together, which seems to be a very heavy hint that perhaps he had her murdered. Um, some poems from the collection that you might like to compare this to, uh, you could compare the Duke's pride and craving for power with the dead king's attitude and his desires in Ozymandias. You could also look at how the abuse of power is treated in this poem and checking out my history as a nice comparison. Thank you very much for listening, Year 11.